easiest way to set up the goals is by keeping it simple, but by setting up little stages in front of the goalpost where you can sort of manage and keep track of all the little hurdles that you've accomplished before you end up kicking that final goal. G'day, Anthony. So tell me, what is the best way to set your goals? That is a very good question there, Freddie. And I reckon the easiest way to set up the goals is by keeping it simple, but by setting up little stages in front of the goalpost where you can sort of manage and keep track of all the little hurdles that you've accomplished before you end up kicking that final goal. That is actually the simplest way to set them up. Mm -hmm. Doesn't sound over the top, but like I said, keeping it simple is one of the best ways of setting up the goals. Okay. Um, it's funny how people talk about goals. I sometimes talk about outcomes. How, how do you uh, see that in relation to goals and outcomes? Do you see any difference or the same thing? Pretty similar. I think they tend to both focus on the end result. Mm -hmm. I think they can sort of link hand in hand with each other. I think your goals sort of end up being the outcome that you want to achieve. But the difference being is that, like I said, sometimes we get a bit too focused on that final outcome or that final goal that we sort of forget the process of how to get to that goal, mm. which I think is a very important factor that sort of needs to be considered a bit more when it comes to training. Mm. There's, there's just so many different, um, I don't know, goal setting workshops and things like that. I think when you know the overall outcome, you set little mini goals or steps to get there. And, you know, if you make or don't make your goal, it doesn't necessarily destroy your outcome if you're headed in a direction. That's just my personal take on it. You got any thoughts on that? No, I totally agree with you when it comes to that, is I think when we get a bit too fixated on a goal, we tend to sort of forget the sort of side steps or any of the other accomplishments that we make along the way, um, you can forget about the progress and that journey of progress. And like you said, in terms of a direction is goals tend to set you in a, a new direction anyways, mm -hmm. when it comes to like an overall outcome. And it tends to set you down a path of a completely different new or a sort of new level of you. And when we sort of set that direction up, you, you accomplish a fair amount of, again, either exercises, exercise techniques, whether or not it be like a target outcome in terms of your weight, both on the weights that you're maybe pushing or trying to lose. There's so many sort of mini milestones that we sort of accomplish that we tend to sort of forget about them if we become too fixated on the end outcome. Mm -hmm. And I think they really become, I think they are really important steps that we need to sort of highlight a lot more because when you look at the overall scheme of things in terms of progression, there's a lot more progression that we've actually made between obviously a trainer and client that, again, sometimes being too fixated on the outcome, that final outcome, you completely bypass all the steps that you've taken in order to actually get into that direction and sort of lead you towards that final outcome. It's funny. Have you ever heard the saying, um, life is something that happens to you when you're on the way to somewhere else? I have heard of that before. And like I said, I think it's a pretty applicable thing with what we're talking about today. Well, I know I've set hundreds of goals and I've missed 90% of them, but I've still achieved incredible things because what I found is in going in a direction, my feelings become clear. And sometimes you go, you know what? I don't want that outcome or that goal but I'm nowhere where I was before, so I've moved on. But I think the whole thing about incremental uh, increase of weights, increase of reps, increase of uh, awareness is around what you're doing. Um, I can see that focusing on the end result can be a bad thing sometimes because it forces you down tracks that you go, oh, well, I made this commitment, I'll, I'll achieve this goal, but the goal may be useless at the end. It's like someone developing software Right, they decide what they want, and three years they get it to market, and the thing's not applicable. You know, it, does, it no longer suits the market. So, I guess what you're saying, and I'm only guessing, 
is it's like an agile management approach where it's iterative. You know, you, you do these short sprints, you get these outcomes, and then you look at how does this goal fit my current circumstance? What's your thoughts on that? That's exactly the truth. It's an adaptive hmm. situation. And I said, people's situations obviously adapt with how they're going and how their progression is going. And I think when you come to setting up goals from the start, you're basing that on your baseline of where you're at, at that sort of current time when you set them up. But as you start doing more exercise, learning a lot more about exercise, and obviously start committing to that and repeatedly doing those exercises, you, those goals will change and adapt. Mm. And like I said, you're basing that on a baseline where you started and then come say when you've taken that next step or that next level in terms of your overall progression, when you sort of reflect back on those goals, they tend not to apply because mm -hmm. you've, your body's adapted to that current state at the current moment where you look back at those goals and you sometimes think, you know what, maybe those goals don't apply to me anymore because I'm now in a different level or I've progressed to a completely different area and different direction where mm -hmm. those goals might have to actually change now and i have to adapt myself to change to obviously what's happening to my current situation and my current level of fitness and i think that's where we get caught up i think the biggest thing is we get caught up on that final outcome where like i said you've based those goals on something from a lot previous and on the different circumstances where again they just don't apply because everything's yeah. adapting, everything changes. And like I said, our bodies are ever changing. Our fitness levels are ever changing. Like I said, and if we're sort of stuck with the original plan, we can send, tend to actually go more backwards than forwards. It's interesting. I found that to be true by my own experience. For instance, when I reach forward for anything in any area of goal setting in my life, be it health or otherwise or business, I find everything is contextual. So you have a context around the decisions you made. Now, if that context shifts, it throws your apple cart all over the road. And then you've got to say, well, I've now got to set new goals and change the goals and reflect on why I did them, where I'm going with them. And uh, I think that's profound because in the health journey, there's a belief, I guess, that you're going to come into a gym or meet a personal trainer and you're just going to get fitter and fitter and fitter and stronger and stronger and stronger. No, you're managing the flex and flow of your life as challenges come into it, injuries, setbacks, environmental conditioning, emotional stuff. You've got everything pouring in on your head from every direction. And really, unless you have a regime where you can say, these are my rhythms, these are my patterns, these are my applications, how do I maintain health with that changing terrain? So what are some of the ways you can adapt to your goals? I think self-reflection is a big one. And I think that's probably an area through my experience where I think people tend not to sort of go over a fair bit. Um, I think the self-reflection sort of goes from the start of the journey to the end of the journey. And we tend not to sort of think about the middle part where I think that sort of middle ground is where most of the progression actually comes from. Mm -hmm. And we have sort of forget about the processes that we've done and all the learning that we've done in that sort of middle ground, where I think is actually what really an important area of development for anyone. Yes, mm -hmm. we've got start. Yes, we've gone to the end, but you still need that middle ground where if without it, you basically haven't actually gone anywhere. And unfortunately, if you don't have that middle ground, it acts as a barrier in terms of actually how you got to that end result. And I think really self-reflecting on those steps that got you to that end outcome is really important because I think it actually then sets you up mm -hmm. to then that next stage when you then move on to obviously then setting up your new goals is you use what has worked in the past, your past experiences, but you can have a better understanding of obviously what works and what doesn't work and those mini goals that you've set in those little periods, I think that actually gives you that vital information when it comes to then setting up your new goals because you can have a better understanding of how you're actually going to achieve it. And obviously you then discover what actually works best for you and what doesn't work best for you. And that's when that adaptive learning and that adaptive development and those adaptive goals all sort of ties in with that. Well, 
above and beyond, I think one of the greatest goals that's been beneficial to me that I set when I first come to you two or three years ago was consistency. Having the goal of consistency was going to be my secret weapon, my superpower. I was going to keep coming no matter what. And even on the off days or if I missed one or I'm not on um, target, I still turned up and still kept the consistency. And what that's done for me is given me a track to run on where the goals have context and they sit inside an overarching thing of consistency. So for me, um, it's a theme. What, what about you and your own health? Uh, you know, not just other people's, but your own. What's your consistent theme? I think when it comes to consistency is consistency in performance and p- consistency in execution, mm-hmm. I think tend to be very, the two very vital parts I tend to sort of look over, um, especially when it comes to training and especially when it comes to sort of exercises so in particular with our case, let's go over with your deadlifts. Mm-hmm. Obviously, when we first started, you obviously wanted to learn it. Mm-hmm. We obviously went through the first step where we obviously went through the teaching phase. Once we obviously mastered that, was obviously being able to then do the exercise and execute the exercise in a way where it was pain-free on your critical spots with you in terms of obviously with your lower back issues, making sure we obviously ticked that off but I think that was the initial stage was obviously a teach and getting the understanding with your deadlifts. On top of that though, then we sort of then changed the goalpost and then it came to how heavy can we go? So then obviously we then sort of used that in terms of setting up goals in terms of how heavy and how could we incrementally increase your weight? And I think we got to that. We got up to a hundred kilos, which I think was a fair accomplishment in itself. And on top of that, to though, yeah. yeah, like if we look back onto it, if I told you when we first started, what, what you thought to do on a hundred kilo deadlift, you probably looked at me going, what's this bloke talking about? On drugs. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I just probably did. yeah. I couldn't see it because yeah, of my, my lower back pain and, and yeah. uh, shoulder injuries and everything else. But um, just holistically from say a pain, uh, a pain level of, one to a hundred. When I came to you, I was living with about 65, 70% pain in my body. Now I'm looking yeah. less than 5% holistically in my body, which was just outside my awareness at the time. So if I had said that was the goal, here's the thing about goals. I wouldn't have even set a goal like that because I didn't have the belief around it, but I exceeded my expectation just circumstantially over two or three years. So now, uh, I would say it would be anyone's goal to be pain-free and you talk about it, but inadvertently, like I said, you head somewhere and you end up somewhere else. So having that uh, new flexibility, I can go back to martial arts if I want or take on another sport in the future that um, has some challenges because now I find that when I do put myself under some stresses, I don't have the torn muscles or, or the bone interactions. Um, I, I, I feel sore like anyone else, but I, I can take some minor risks. Bearing in mind my age at 68, I've got to be an adult and grow up a little bit and not, not you know, go rollerblading or skateboarding on a park or something. But I, I can do a lot of things that I never thought possible. So why do people actually fixate to goals? I have, but why? Why? I was fixated on goals for a long time, but I found them actually not nurturing and, and they actually pushed me through round peg square hole situations where you forced yourself to do things and things break. So why do people fixate on goals? There's probably a couple of reasons. I think is that sense of accomplishment mm-hmm. tends to be the first reason why you do set up goals. I think you end up wanting to set up that target and set up that end result. So at least what you're doing is trying to lead to a desired outcome. But like we talked about, I think we can get a bit too fixated on it where we tend to forget about all the side, those side and mini goals that we've accomplished along the way. And when it comes to that is, I think that's when we get too fixated. And like you said, it sort of loses its meaning a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And, For sure. 
when it loses that meaning, it tends to lose. Like I said, you, you have that side effect where you can start losing motivation. Again, you don't really want to come in to do exercise anymore because like I said, it, it sort of then starts, not like I said, from initially wanting to drive you to somewhere, it then rebounds and then wants to force you to go back and not actually continue on with it. Where I think, like we mentioned earlier, was we need to sort of work on that sort of middle ground and mm. think about the process of how to get to it. Well, one of the things is you, you mentioned to me a couple of times about being not specific and too broad. And we went through a stint there for a long time. I found it so challenging where, you know, I have knee trouble and we've got that unique machine that you got that I was standing in over in the corner with the kettlebells and doing those uh, sit down squats. Now we stayed yep. with that for quite a while and increased uh, sort of turning my duck feet inwards. That was really powerful because over time I was able to do lunges and I've never been able to do lunges in my life because of my knees. But you got me you know, doing long stints of lunges uh, a couple of sets, which, whew, you know, and, and looking back on that, where I am today, I haven't done them for a while because of COVID, but as I walk down the street, I do not have the same ankle and knee pain that I, I've lived with for most of my life. And that was because we were specific and, and targeted on building some resilience rather than just general doing 20 different exercises or whatever it is to sort of get buff and build the muscles all over your body and work out. You, you, you honed in on an area that you felt was limiting me. And that's one of your powerful specialities with posture and sport where you can see something that's debilitating and that you focus in on that and you create maybe four or five mini exercises just to achieve that one goal to be able to do that exercise pain and trouble free. What's your thoughts on that? Because a lot of people drop off because they don't see results or they're not prepared to focus on that one thing because they're worrying about what else they may miss out on. Because as soon as you go lower body, what happens to the upper body? As soon as you go upper body, what happens to the lower body? But you, you seem to have a way of cycling things around. So what's your thoughts on that one? Uh, so not, this might take a bit of while to explain, but I'll try and sort of break it down as easy as possible. But yeah. so when we came to the specific area, we sort of found, so let's link back obviously with your scenario with when it came to your lower body, you had obviously the way your feet were set that they were pointing out, you had sort of that duck feet, which limited not only your movement for your ankle, but then linked in through your hips mm. and obviously hip your knees as well. And your body would obviously compensate in a way where again, you'd obviously your body would have to adapt to how obviously everything was aligned, how things postured. Obviously, when you first came in, you wanted to obviously there was a toning up, but also there was that area of obviously trying to move into a pain-free and be able to move in a pain-free body. So when we talk about we broke down those exercises, we broke down those movements, we like you said, we were specific to target on one area, and that was your feet. Once we target your area with your feet and actually help with that alignment, we sort of had that sort of mini milestone that your alignment with your feet was obviously getting better and more aligned, mm -hmm. that it actually opened your horizons to a lot more different areas. So obviously when we were doing that work for your hips, yes, we were trying to strengthen your glutes to help you with your deadlifts. But at the same time, we were trying to help with your alignment, which then allowing that any movements that you were doing with your body a, you obviously your imbalances between the front and back of your body in terms of your muscle groups and which one was obviously more dominant. We tried to even that up. On top of that, though, we were trying to reteach you in terms of your body alignment and how, if you were moving, how your body should be moving in a much more natural alignment and obviously getting you become more aware of it. So if you did catch yourself not doing it, you made that adjustment, you thought about it, so then you lessen the likelihood of trying to repeat it again which again, we had that mini milestone as well, which then meant once you became more conscious of it, we could actually start you having lunges. Because like I said, we've gone through, like I said, like we just said, with two mini milestones, but yes, we were specific on one area, but it just opened horizons to all these other areas that you didn't think were possible, which is similar to the video that we did last time, obviously hmm. stepping into 
don't know, and move into areas that you didn't think was actually possible just by actually giving it a go. So like we were like saying, we became a bit more specific, but because we were specific, it opened a horizon to so many other avenues that we didn't think were possible. So yes, when it comes to setting up goals, we can be pretty broad about it, but if we find one area that's specific, we've basically now had that process of how we're going to get to that end outcome. Yeah, well, when, when I first come to you, you asked me about what sport I'd like to apply myself to. You asked me a lot of different questions and I wasn't really able to answer most of them because I just didn't know. Um, I, I remember that the first seven or eight months was going through all those processes and I remember these words from you. After seven months, you said, um, now I can begin to train you. Now we can start to train because you were training me on how to train, on how to get past those limitations so I could actually go through uh, a systemic workout without glitches and pains and having to go to failure and say, oh, I'm in a problem now, I can't come in tomorrow or whatever. So we, we, we straightened out those niggleties. It took seven or eight months before I started down the proper training regime. The first, all, all that seven months was really preparatory for me to get past limitations to actually systematically exercise. So that was a, a prep set up by you that was uh, fantastic. That's why um, you now I've heard a lot of things that exercise physiologists are the best and they are, they're super cool and I, I go to them. But the, the, the downside of personal trainers is that they're for mature age people with these sort of debilitations, uh, a lot of the training is outside their scope. They don't know, they haven't had the expertise. But your background in sports and, and, and posture is phenomenal. And uh, you're different to the other trainers I have, but I put you on an equal footing with them because um, you're the one that's given me the consistency, the, the foundation that all the other subtle nuances can sit on the top. But um, you're bringing a lot of subtle nuances as well. How did you get to that level of perception of just these super subtle distinctions? Probably experience. Probably the three things is probably experience, doing the exercise myself, mm -hmm. and probably working with a wider variety of clients. So obviously with the experience is I've been doing it for six years. So you tend to pick up on things quite easily because you've been so exposed to it on a regular basis. Um, you can tend to pick up on common traits. You tend to pick up if anyone's in a certain industry or does a certain job, there's likely outcomes on postural imbalances that are most likely the case. Um, or anyone, again, even as simple as if someone's right-handed or left-handed, you obviously know mm -hmm. from that which side is going to be their dominant side. And even in terms of just the way they sort of stand in front of you, you can tend to pick out what their body will naturally do and what their body finds obviously easiest to do because obviously that's what they've done most commonly and that's obviously what their body's been taught through repetition and what their body finds to be easiest and more comfortable for them. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the second bit, obviously, by doing it myself is by doing the exercises myself, I, like I said, have a better understanding of how to teach it. And I can sort of put myself in the client's shoes. If something's wrong, I can pick up on it knowing that I've actually done it myself. And those, that's when those little micro movements, say for subtly, say if we're doing a lunge, for example, if the shoulder's out of place and they're feeling that obviously imbalance or they're falling to a certain direction, obviously me doing it myself, I can sort of pick up on, right, if this area's out, I know what's obviously going to be the chain reaction when it comes to it. So obviously doing it myself and actually practicing it and trying to master it myself, obviously A, makes it easier for me to actually instruct and teach someone the movement. But also B is if something's off, I'll be able to pick up on it myself because like I said, I've been there and done that. Yep. That, that's, that's phenomenal, Anthony, because um, part of my background and training is in neurolinguistic programming and behavioral modeling. And with behavioural modelling, uh, there's a lot of analysis of the, the recipes and the sub-modalities and the, the thoughts, the pictures, the, uh, the uh, smells, tastes, the physiological sensations in your body. There's a whole recipe to performing functions. And I think 
Um, just as a, a, a gift to you, there's a three-day course called A Touch of Magic with James Deslarkis. And uh, if you'd like to attend one of those this coming year, um, I'd be happy for uh, FKC Health to sponsor you and pay for that and as a as a sense of gratitude for you coming on the channel. How, how does that sound to you? Because I think yeah. we'll get I think I'd love to. Yeah. 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 No, I'd I'll, I'll organise that and we'll, we'll go into that because I think you have a natural tendency for that skill set already all by yourself. And I think this would actually put labels and concepts and methodologies into your hands because um, going forward, I see you really helping mature age people um, and, and younger people, of course, but especially people my age that are keen to get back in the game and keen to extend their lives and their health um, I, I couldn't recommend you more highly because I've experienced it. So I, I, I don't hand out recommendations that easily because people do let you down. But in, in your case and the case of uh, a select few others, I, I'm more than happy to recommend excellence when I see it. So what, looking back into the past, you, you say it's an accomplishment within itself. What, what, what do you think? What do you mean by that? By looking back into the past, you say an accomplishment is yeah, within itself. So I think when it comes to looking in the past and having that sort of self-reflection, you start to remember the things that you've done. And I think you can have that time to sort of think back and reflect on all the new things, or the new exercises, Either whether or not it be the weights that you've lifted, the distance that you've run, and mm. like in your case, obviously doing the exercise in a pain-free manner, is I think when we take that step back to have a look of what we've done, what we've accomplished, and the process of how we've got there, I think it helps sets us up to take that extra step forward. And like the old saying goes, one step backwards for two steps forwards. Mm. I think it's really applicable when we have that self-reflection when it comes to sort of going over your goals. Because I think it does set you up to then become more adaptive. And I think it gives you that more vital information when it comes to setting up those new goals and then setting up those goalposts in front of you. Because I think, like you said, I think goals are ever changing. I think yeah. statements to having goals are always ever changing. And I think having goals, again, at the start are going to be completely different when you're halfway through your journey when it comes to exercise and health. Because I think, like I said, you're basing it on where you're at that current time. And that's where I think that self-reflection helps provide you that next step. And I think it provides more information for you to adapt your goals. And then you can adapt your goals in such a much more specific way where I think it has more context and has more purpose in the future. Wow. I, I've had a Fredism. I, I, I come up with this a long, long time ago and it's, it stayed with me because it works and it goes like this i always go in a direction in order to see but once i've seen i cease that direction now what i mean there is i'll go down a path and reach a goal and, and, and fulfill it but if i've seen the superfluousness of that goal or the uselessness of that goal or what that goal is set out to do and it no longer serves me, I'll stop on a dime and turn around and go in another direction. So I go in the direction to achieve the goal. The goal, as long as it serves me, I'm invested to see it through to the end. I just did a 30-day challenge, nearly killed me, but I got to the end of it and I got the benefit from that. But I have abandoned a lot of goals I've set up that at the time I started them, they seemed beneficial halfway through they seem beneficial but at some point they become derogatory or, 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 or anti-serving uh, so I've got out of those goals pretty quickly and said no nah, it, it, it served its purpose now I've seen the end result I stop here is that sort of along the lines you're saying about reflecting and, and changing your goals yeah exactly that and I think it's exactly the same path that we sort of is a common trait of sort of what people tend to get too fixated on with goals. It's almost like that sort of tunnel vision where you sort of block out all the things along the way until you get to the end where the light the tunnel is. And I think that's probably the most critical part 
when it comes to that sort of setting up the goals, but also that reflecting on goals. And like you said, I think the journey itself to accomplish the goals, mm. I think probably more vital and more important. Yeah. And I think no, that's when, incredible. That's incredible because a lot of the people seem to, you know, drop off or lack motivation because their goals are more focused on the outcome rather than the journey to the outcome. And uh, I think um, th this, this is an, a, an amazing topic because I think a lot of people are so fixated on goals, they lose sight of the reason why they do things and and the effects that there, there's one guy as a movie here had a goal to seek revenge for something. He got his outcome, his revenge, but he lost his wife, his kids, his, his life all got mucked up. The expense of doing that was just not worth it. The cost of him getting his revenge, which was his goal, was really in the end rather destructive. But at the start, you seem to side with him and think this is justified. It's a good idea. Go and sort these people out. But in achieving that result, he, he lost more than he gained. I think that can happen in the gym. You know, you can go down there and set all these physical goals and then find you've got injury out of it, you've got um, an imbalance in your life, a whole lot of other things, or you can exacerbate certain things. A perfect example, people on a treadmill. I've seen people coming in and on that treadmill all day, every day, you know, I, I look out the, uh, the window of, where I work, which is a exercise physiology and myotherapy clinic. And there's a 24 hour gym across the road. And I just see some of these people that look unfit on the treadmill and they're there five days a week. And that goal of going to there and doing that, it's better than staying home on the couch, but I don't think it's going to give them a good result. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think it's, it's probably following that right track, but, pathway of you're on the way of achieving your goal but you've lost your meaning of why you want to get to that goal mm. and i think it comes down to what's your actual purpose when it comes to the gym and when you are training is there a purpose behind it that's actually driving you to actually get to that goal and like you use and like you quoted in that movie is when you're so fixated in one like i said you become so one-dimensional that's it yeah you, like i said there tends to be both good and bad things that happen along the way that you tend not to pick up on. And then once you accomplish that goal, like I said, yes, you did it, but is does that meaning to get in there? Is it as important as the end result? And I think that's, I think that's the trap a lot of people fall into, but not just in a gym setting. I think it's just an everyday setting as well, where when you come too fixated on something, like I said, you tend to lose the better things of life or the better things yeah. or the accomplishes that you have in trying to get to there. And like well, I said, in terms of the nice point of view, people yeah. on a treadmill, yes, it's all good and well running on a treadmill, but are there other things you could probably be doing or are there other things you can expose yourself to along the way? And yes, guess what? You may have ran 30 minutes on the treadmill, but could you have found something more productive along the way to get into that 30 minutes or could you have pushed yourself that little bit more on the treadmill? Mm. Or better still, could you have actually done it outside of a gym scenario? So, and then, like I said, you, you're missing out on those couple of critical things along the way. Well, something that I'll never, ever forget uh, was when I was going for a grading in martial arts, um, uh, Go Ken Roo, and uh, I was in a hall of about... 70 or 80 people going for a grading. I was in one of my minor belts. And I'll never forget this. The sensei, third damn black belt, walks out. Big guy. And he goes, who here wants a black belt? About 30, 40 hands go up. And I'm looking around. And he smiles and he leads across to a table behind him, picks up a black belt and throws it on the floor. And he goes, there you go, 995. <laughs> and, and then he goes it's not the belt it's who you become and what I've realised for myself it's character it's internal fortitude it's the influence you are in your life and health is a direct correlation to that so 
in looking at what we do and with goal setting, Anthony, um, I, I just really appreciate you uh, spending your valuable time to share with our listeners and uh, viewers uh, these insights because these are the game changers for people. These are the subtle things that are going to make a difference. Um, you, you, you're watching FKC Health Interviews on Health, and this is uh, Anthony Salomon from Three Elements Fitness. And if you want to see more, uh, you, you'll be able to uh, contact Anthony through his uh, links below the video once it's posted. And also uh, feel good to hit the, the bell and subscribe and uh, you know, we'll have a lot more happening. I want to thank you, Anthony. I look forward to our next session that we're, we'll be doing in the next little while. And I really appreciate you coming on. Well, thanks for your time, Freddie. No, absolute pleasure. Thank you.